let the peace, love, and blessing of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The mission of leader Olumba Olumba Obu. Bible class lecture delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, leader Olumba Olumba Obu, the supernatural teacher. Quote, the power in brotherhood of the cross and star is the word of God. Brethren, the only thing that can save you in brotherhood of the cross and star is the word of God delivered to you daily. When you confess that you have quarreled, that you have no patience, and indulge in other vices, it is because the word of God is not dwell, does not dwell richly in you. You cannot stand firm in the Lord if you do not receive the recondite teachings of the Holy Spirit. The field is wide, but the reapers are few. In First Peter chapter 2 verse 8 it reads, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. I have not come into the world to joke. I have not come to teach the word of God in theory, but in practice. In the church denomination, when you are accepted as their member, you will only be asked whether you believe in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. When you reply in the affirmative, you will be told to go and continue in paying your dues, whether you practice the words of God or not you are sure to go to heaven no matter how heinous your sins may be whether you commit fornication and adultery or indulge in, con in occultism once you accept that jesus christ is your savior in the church denomination you are saved such teachings are the teachings of demons in all the church denominations, the only aspect that they know is that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. But as for his teachings, his exhortations, his injunctions, and his commandments, none of the church denominations are able to put them into practice. What is it to believe in a man? In James chapter 2 verses 14 to 17 it reads what doth it profit my brethren though a man say he hath faith and have not works can faith save him if a brother or a sister be naked and destitute of daily food and one of you say unto them depart in peace be ye warned and filled, notwithstanding, yet give them not those things which are needful to the body. What doth it profit? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Brethren, you profess to believe in our Lord Jesus Christ but you fail to practice his teaching does this then mean that you believe in him whosoever professes to believe in our lord jesus christ and fails to abide by his teachings is a liar in the same token whosoever professes to have faith without practicing the teachings of our lord jesus christ is a deceiver 
Faith without works is dead. Just as you believe in the existence of God, the demons also believe in his existence. Even though the demons believe in God, they continue to steal, fornicate, commit adultery, indulge in concoction and charms without the least intention of practicing a single word of God. While some members of Brothers of the Cross and Star are in the presence of the Holy Father leader Olumba Olumba Obu, they pretend to be very religious, but when they depart from his physical presence, they fight and indulge in all manner of vices. Does this kind of behavior prove that you have faith in the leader? In St. Matthew chapter 7 verses 21 to 23 it reads, not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have we cast out devils? And in thy name have done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never know you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Why will he deny these people? Just as you are professing to be members of brotherhood with your white sultans, you continue to tell lies, drink, fornicate, sue people to court, hurt one another, and indulge in all sorts of vices. Is this our brotherhood member should believe? Even if you fast for one month and continue to sin, your fasting does not help you. It is of no benefit to you or to God. Even if you no longer eat meat, fish, stockfish, and are a complete vegetarian, but yet you are stealing, you are easily exasperated, you deny and impute sins on others. For you to be a vegetarian in sin is of no use to you, is of no use to God, or any use to the entire world. You also go about trying to resemble the leader, leader Lumbo Lumbo Lu in the way that he dresses. You wear white shorts, white shorts, sleeve shirts, and go barefooted. In the case of a sister, she puts on a white gown and a white headscarf, but indulges in fornication and other vices. What is the usefulness of wearing white and going about barefooted, professing to be a brotherhood? Do you know that the aim of my teaching is to bring you up so that you may resemble me? That means that you must not commit any sins. All the members of the Brotherhood of the Cross and Star and the entire world should be informed that my mission on earth is to lead the whole world to the accurate knowledge of truth. You must not beat your child, your housemaid or your wife. You must not count sins for anyone nor judge any person. You must not commit any act of sin. Now that you are wasting your time, it is incumbent that you put these teachings into practice. Do you know that one man should marry one woman? Each man has to have only one wife for the whole of his lifespan. Nobody is to consult oracles or soothsayers, and you must not inject any black powder into your body or rub any concoction on your body. You must not believe in ghosts. You must not believe in mermaids, nor witchcraft, or any evil forces. If you believe in these illusions, you are not a true-born brotherhood. I always laugh at all that you are doing because you do not understand yourself. 
At the moment, there is no member of Brotherhood of the Cross that has taught who practices Brotherhood. Right now, it is only when you come to Calabar, to 34 Ambus Street, or 26 Mark Perka Road, to see the leader physically, that you can see the real Brotherhood being practiced. Immediately you leave the presence of the Holy Father, you cannot find anyone practicing real brotherhood. Show me any one person who possesses all the virtues of God in him. Such a person would be a true representative of brotherhood. When you come before me, you pretend to be very pious, but when you depart, you behave like your great grandparents. You cannot compare this era with the era of our Lord Jesus Christ. The new teachings of the Holy Spirit. When our Lord Jesus Christ was first in the world, before he shed his precious blood, his disciples did not receive the Holy Spirit. At that time, man was not united with God. After our Lord Jesus Christ shed his precious blood, man became reconciled with God and both of them became united. That was why our Lord Jesus Christ said, It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. He also said, I have yet many things to say unto you. But ye cannot bear them now. Albeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Most of you are complaining that my teachings are new. And that most of them were not taught by our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ in his advent had a very short assignment. He had only come to shed his precious blood. Since he had only come for a short assignment, he did not come with his whole family. He came alone. Even if our Lord Jesus Christ had remained from that time until now, he would not have completed his assignment. All the Gospels that I give to you daily are only introductory teachings leading to my main assignment. If I do not, if I do not all these things, you will not come to the accurate knowledge of truth. I have known Adam, I have known Moses, Abraham, Noah, Enoch, Elijah and all the other patriarchs. I have spoken about Abraham, Moses, Elijah and their assignments in this world. The work that I have come to do on earth is so great and significant that no one has ever done such work before. It is also impossible that any other person can accomplish this work. The ability to make people to become wealthy is small is a small assignment. Money had existed in the world from the from time immemorial. Raising the dead, making the blind to see, and performing miracles had been in the world right from the time of Elijah. All these are minor assignments. The major assignment that I have come to do has never been done before, nor will it ever be done again. It is to reform a sinner and return him to the standard required by God so that he may live according to the expectation of God. Since the creation of man by God, have you ever found anyone in the world who is able to reform a sinner? Right from the time of Adam, have you ever seen a man who has been able to change himself from this vile body to the glorious body of our Lord Jesus Christ? I have told you that our Lord Jesus Christ did not 
attain the accurate knowledge of the truth. That was why he became annoyed and drove out the people who were selling their merchandise in the temple with a cane. Today, in this new kingdom of God, if you take up a cane and beat anyone, you have derailed from the path of truth. Any day that you take up a cane and beat anyone, I will give you zero and you cannot enter this kingdom. You know that our Lord Jesus Christ cursed the two cities of Bethsaida and Chorazin. In St. Matthew chapter 11 verse 21 it reads, Woe unto thee, Chorazin! Woe unto thee, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Right from today, whosoever curses or abuses anyone cannot enter into this kingdom. Even though our Lord Jesus Christ cursed and abused, he did not commit sin because that was his own assignment. I am not criticizing our Lord Jesus Christ, neither am I criticizing Moses. I am merely informing you that their assignments differ from my own. This is so that you may know exactly what assignment I have come to perform at this close of the age. Many people in the world who want to glory in vices always say that even our Lord Jesus Christ was angry or that he changed water into wine for people to drink. Our Lord Jesus Christ behaved in this way because things had not yet been made perfect by them. That is to say that he had not yet shed his precious blood. The moment that he shed his blood and made the pronouncement, it is finished. Everything was concluded. When we were using the old currency, that is, the pound sterling, which was the legal tender by then. At that time, you could use that money for buying anything that you wanted. But now that it has ceased to be the legal tender, if you do, you are acting against the law. I want to quote to you various passages from the Bible so that you may know the assignment of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is so that you may guard against the errors and mistakes that he made. Our Lord Jesus Christ wept and mourned when Lazarus died. But now, any day that you weep or mourn, no matter the circumstances, you cannot enter this kingdom. Any day that you say woe unto any person, then you have deprived yourself of this kingdom. In St. Matthew chapter 11 verses 20 to 23, it says, Then began he to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Woe unto thee, Chorazin, woe unto thee, Bethsaida, if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which art, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which had been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. When you come into Brotherhood of the Cross and Star, you are told all the things that you should not indulge in. Therefore, if you entangle yourself in these things which you were told not to do, you are lost. 
I have come to establish the new kingdom of God on earth. This is the new heaven and the new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Moses is Moses in his own advent came to establish judgment. But our Lord Jesus Christ came to modify and confirm the judgment of Moses. My mission is to establish the new kingdom of God on earth as it is done in heaven. In this new kingdom, I have nothing to do with abuses, annoyances, hatred, or any vices. I have not come in order to judge and condemn you, but to make everything new. Therefore, no matter how badly behaved your children are, do not beat them. Do you understand the intricacies of this kingdom? The intricacies of this kingdom are quite clear to the outsiders. That is, those who are not yet born into this kingdom, they know that no one inside this kingdom is permitted to indulge in any manner of sin. I have told you that many of you do not understand my mission on earth, just as you have in the secular world various stages on, of establishment, like the magistrate courts, the courts of appeal, and the Supreme Court, so also does the same situation prevail in the spiritual world. The Supreme Court is the equivalent of the Holy Spirit personified. Even though our Lord Jesus Christ cursed the scribes and the Pharisees, such a thing cannot happen in this kingdom. You are not to pronounce war unto any person because this is the new kingdom of God where righteousness dwells. You are not to curse or abuse anyone. Neither are you to frown your face any day that you curse or abuse anyone, you are under the judgment of hellfire. In St. John chapter 11 verse 35 it reads, Jesus wept. Perhaps you want to console yourself by shedding tears. Any day that you weep in this new kingdom, you cannot enter into it. You are not to shed tears or be sorrowful throughout your life. Our Lord Jesus Christ wept and became sorrowful because he was in the flesh. This is the beginning of the spiritual assignment. Brethren, have you not read the small pamphlet in Brotherhood entitled The First Step to God, which says that you must not shed tears? You must not cry or mourn in brotherhood of the cross and star. If is there any of you who is aware that nobody is permitted to cry no matter the circumstances? To cry is the work of the flesh. All those who attend funerals and shed tears have scored zero. Do you know where a man comes from or where he goes when he dies? Man is the property of God. Whatever it pleases him to do with man, human beings, he is entitled to do it. You have no right to question him. In St. John chapter 2 verse 15, it says, and when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changes money and overthrew the tables. 
All that our Lord Jesus Christ did was what was written about him. If he had not accomplished all these things, he would not have been the one prophesied about. He did not make any mistakes. After having accomplished all that he had been written about, he made a pronouncement. It is finished. From time to time, Jehovah God and his Christ had to send a human being into the world for a specific assignment. Where one person stops is where the other person will begin. The assignment of God can be likened to a contractor who is erecting a building. It is not the bricklayer who will do the roofing of the house. Neither will it be the carpenter who will handle the wiring of the house, and so on. The same thing happens when God sends a person to perform a certain assignment on earth. When one person finishes his assignment, another person will continue from there.